How important were the crowdfunders in the making of this film? Well, they, the film went broke at least three times. Um, How often has that happened in your career? Uh, not as much with, as with this one. It's, the hardest thing in making a film is to raise the money. I find it exhausting. In fact, I find myself, if I'm not thinking about the iniquities of, of digital equipment, I'm thinking about the iniquities of um, raising money and being a kind of supplicant. It's, it's difficult. Was this, and the hardest, hmm? I'm sorry, was this the hardest film? This was the hardest know? one to raise money for. Not because the subject, people welcomed the subject, this is when I explained it to them and gave them the synopsis and so on. But <clears throat> um, these are hard times for billionaires and foundations and other rich people so, who, uh, who, who allow um, some of their uh, uh, fortune to perhaps do good work and help make films. Um, so. In some desperation, we turn to the people who have followed my work over years. I was very reluctant to do this. In fact, I opposed it. But I was very reluctant to crowdfund because it didn't seem right to me to ask ordinary people to cough up to major productions. Mm. Um, but we had to. And what I found uh, really uh, encouraging, if not inspiring, was that the people who gave modest amounts, not so modest amounts, gave it in the spirit of wanting to be, have a part in the film. They were very generous in their spirit. So it was the fastest crowdfunding uh, in Britain of its kind ever. We yeah. raised raised a hundred thousand US dollars in uh, about six weeks. And how long did it take to make the film? Two, two years. years. Two years. And you keep throwing yourself into the fray. I you do. could be taking... It's a good way of describing filmmaking yeah. as the fray. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm presuming that you could get a job on a TV news service? I'm not, no, no, I don't think so. I don't think they'd hire me, no. I've made films. One of my subjects is the media. My One of my most successful films, that is one of my most popular films, was called The War You Don't See. Yes. And it was about how the media beat the drums of war and helped uh, start the invasion of Iraq in 2003. So, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't. I would. I don't want to work for television news anyway. But you do keep throwing yourself into the fray, into the well, increasingly difficult world of making documentaries. At 77, I'm just going to ask you why. Why do you keep doing it? I mean, well, why not? Uh, well, <laughs> why should anyone stop? It doesn't make yeah, any sense to me. Yeah, I know. But no thoughts of taking it a bit easy. Uh, What's taking at, it easy? Uh, this is all ageist rubbish you're talking, isn't it? Hey, No uh, thoughts of taking it a bit easy well, there, yeah, John. I mean, after all these years of, of, uh, of provoking and uh, all that. <laughs> oh, just saying You've I've got, got your enough, answer. I've caused enough trouble. I'm just going to put my feet up and just live off the royalties. Never a thought of doing uh, it. Living like off that. the royalties. Uh, tell me about that. Ah, uh, well, you uh, there, what royalties do I live on? Uh, <laughs> the royalties pay for the film. There is no money in making documentaries. And how do you live? Do you live? Well, I've been a journalist, as you pointed out, for some considerable period, and that's how I live. Yeah, but I wouldn't be if I was starting out now, in my twenties. I wouldn't be able to afford to make these films. I subsidize them. I lend to the production. Uh, I don't make money out of them. And uh, that's fine by me, but I wouldn't be able to do that as a young person starting out 
trying to build a career and also to start a family and so on. It's, it's, it's uh, money governs too many good things. Has your attitude to the impact of film changed over the years? I mean, when we're young, we're all gung ho and wanting to change the world, and we make a film and we think this will make a difference. As we get older, I don't, older, I don't think know. like that. You know, I think like an old fashioned journalist. That's what I am. Okay, so, um, so, and so the, as a journalist, I think like uh, as the great. American war correspondent Martha Gellhorn said that you, a good journalist thinks from the ground up, not from the top down. Most journalism these days is from the top down, that is, represents power. Yeah. Oh. And that's, that's why I make the films. Mm. Uh, uh, it's not about changing the world, it's not up to me to change the world. People do that. It's about the general concept of the, the impact that films can have on changing minds, do they in fact change minds or do they rather cement people in their existing belief systems? Well, the assumption in your question is that they cement people in their, and, and that's absolute rubbish. They don't. They don't. Uh, what they do, uh, I can't measure. It's impossible well, for many you, films, yeah. except some. Mm -hmm. Several of my films have had significant effects. My film on Cambodia, oh, yeah. Year oh, Zero. Yeah. My film on East Timor. Uh, and, and my film on Thalidomide Children and others have had a very, um, a very clear consequence. Uh, now, none of that was really expected and always surprised me. Other films, they're about ideas. Uh, such as the one I mentioned, The War You Don't See, is about journalism, about the media. I don't know what the effect of that film was. The last film I did about Utopia, which was the fourth yes. film I made Do about uh, indigenous people in this country. Well, I think probably its greatest effect was that it gave indigen many indigenous people uh, a sense that they weren't alone and that's why so many of them all over Australia came to see it that something they knew they weren't seeing anything new on the film was there as a film altogether one story uh, I think giving them that modicum of encouragement um, is Good enough for me. It may have also helped to encourage the notion of a treaty. I don't know. The point is, if you claim a piece of work, uh, such as a film, has a really, a really uh, important consequence, if you claim that without evidence, you're on very shaky ground. We don't know. John Pilger, which of your films has affected you personally the most? Uh, I can't say. That's a bit... That's... Can I, push I understand why you're asking it. Yes. But, well, you but all, all, my, all, my, all my... To say one more than another, there are, there are, there are a particularly vivid memories and examples, but I, I would, they don't compete with each other. I well, mean, the films I've made undoubtedly in Australia about indigenous people um, have, because I've gone back to the subject over many, many years, um, I think have probably, uh, from an early age, had a, a very enduring effect on me and I hope show in the films because um, it, it's the, the indigenous life, indigenous culture, indigenous people and the indigenous land itself are the only thing that's unique about this country. The rest is all derivative, shipped in from Essex and the United States and wherever. But that's unique. That's you unique and that's, that's had, that's, and the denial of that uniqueness, I suppose, uh, has informed all those films 
which are probably... I, I, another way of putting it, I've met some of the, the Australians I most admire in making those films. Uh, and I was talking to one of my colleagues when we were making Utopia and we were discussing this. And I said, you know, we're meeting, and he had done work with me, Alan Lowry, he'd worked me, another Australian, on previous films about Indigenous people in this country. And that was the common thread that we'd met these extraordinary people uh, in Indigenous culture, unrecognised. And that's probably had the most effect um, in many ways. Are you encouraged by other documentary filmmakers or do you fear that you might be the last of a, of a breed? <laughs> last of a breed. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes feels when you're slogging down the money raising trail that you are the last of a breed. It's very hard to get backing funding for documentaries as all documentary makers know. And, and, and you said before that if you were a young person now that you wouldn't... I don't think I'd... No. Not, not for subjects like this. You, get, you would get them for... Ah, they'd have a built-in sponsorship somewhere, maybe do a bit of a deal with Google and, uh, or something. Uh, you, you know, they'd, they'd have to appeal uh, to the commercial world, perhaps in some way. They may have to have a touch of the so-called reality genre about them. I don't know. <laughs> you mentioned how you're constantly on the line financially when making a film, yes. and then it's getting harder. Yes. You have an outstanding website, johnpilger.com, mm -hmm. yes. on which all of your films are mm. available free. for free. That was my decision. Put them up, let people see them. Not even charge a dollar a film? No. Why? Because I want people to see the films. Uh, I don't make films to make money. I make films to, I hope, inform people. Simple as that. Uh, and why should they have to struggle through the quagmire of some platform or other, uh, putting in a, a couple of bucks to see a film uh, uh, so that I can add it as change. But perhaps, perhaps it's unwise of me. I should charge for the films and that would make the next film. Uh, but why? You know, they, the films go back to 1970. I'm delighted they've been remastered. That, you know, at the, a click of a mouse you can, you can see work that was made on film. Uh, often in very difficult circumstances, many years ago. I, I find that absolutely wondrous. Just hey, can I ask you one other question? Yeah. What do you enjoy? What makes you... What, what do you well, do I enjoy from? making films. Okay, apart from the, the making of films and dealing with power but structures... But that's... A, that's a, no, it's not bad. Making films the whole life, isn't it? It's about travel. It's about... It's about the privilege of meeting lots of people I wouldn't meet if I was sitting in Sydney or London. Mm. Uh, do you have a, a hobby or a, a hobby, time or a hobby like stamp collecting or something? 